guy like James Stepper coming back to the side, a guy with so much World Cup experience. And a couple of younger players have talked about how he was sort of telling him what to expect, what to sort of, you know, deal with the World Cup nerves. How does he help you from a coach's perspective, just sort of rally the, rally the guys? Yeah, he's like having a coach on the field. Heidi, you've gone with Ben Donaldson again at the back after a great game against George. What was the thinking there? And was there any consideration to Andrew Kellaway on the bench? Uh, yeah, no, we've had a look, good look at all those. Kell's been training well. Yeah, it's a difficult decision, but uh, Dono played very well at fullback in the last game, kicked well, and we feel like we've got the necessary cover there. And do you feel like that's Ben's best position? I know you said he's trained a lot of 15, but you sort of see that as his jersey to lose now, and so that could be his spot moving forward? Well, he has it for this game. Uh, morning, Ed. Um, I guess coming into this pool, everyone thought the Wales game was going to be the biggest one. Did you see this as the biggest game of the pool, and if so, why? Uh, because it's our next game. In terms of challenges then, what, um, what additional challenges do Fiji present that maybe the other teams in the pool don't? Uh, well, they've got, a, as we know, a brilliant ability to play counter-attacking rugby. Um, and they've got pace and they've got precision. Um, and that puts a different test to you. Hi, Eddie. Uh, Nick Frost returns. Can you talk about what he's going to bring, but also the situation he's had with his uh, injury? And Tom Pepper was saying the other day that he MacGyvered a solution uh, to try and avoid it happening again. Can you give us any insight to that? I don't know what MacGyver is, mate. Uh, it's too hard to explain, so we'll move on from that. And just maybe then about Nick Frost and his injury, if he's done has to do anything special, I guess, to uh, get on the field for this one. No, he's been training really well. Christy, or Mark, sorry, Mark. Uh, Eddie, on Saturday, uh, you said you didn't want to talk too much about Fiji because of the success against Georgia. Um, but three years ago, you did say that Fiji would be the dark horse of, of this World Cup if they got their pathways right. Um, are they? Have they got those pathways right? And, and do you still believe that they are one of the dark horses for this cup? Yeah, well, they're a they're a team of power. Uh, they got pace, um, and they showed that in the last ten minutes against Wales. And, and uh, we haven't discussed Taniella's injury yet either. Um, can you give us any insight into how he's tracking? Uh, yeah, well, he's got a, a hamstring strain. We believe he'll be available uh, in the next couple of weeks. Sure. And, and some people might be asking what's going on at training, a couple of big injuries to big, important first-choice players. Um, is is the, the strength and conditioning program being looked at, or is there an explanation why? There's injuries in, in, a, in a big test on you? What big injuries? Uh, well, the, the, the hamstring to Taniella and, and, and calf yesterday to look. Can't tell you, mate. Uh, Dave, there could be obviously a couple of big changes to the forward pack. Um, does that sort of change your approach at all? And, uh, and what sort of challenge do you see coming from the Fijians uh, in that regard? No, um, no changes. We've got our next man up approach here, so everyone's prepared. Um, that's why we train so well together. Um, Fiji, I think Eddie's covered it well. You know, the, the counter attack, the counter attack threat um, all across the park. They got world class players, so um, yeah, we need to be switched on on Sunday. Dave, are you the captain if Will's out? Mate, it's all pretty new, so. Um, we're just I'm fully expecting Will to be ready to go so I've just found out this morning that yeah he's pulled up um, a bit sore so he's getting medical treatment and we'll go from there so uh, Dave um, James is playing in a unfamiliar role not one that he hasn't played before but what what do you think of him as a player and how he might adapt to that in on a stage like this Oh, he wouldn't be there if he couldn't adapt. Um, I think that's one of his strengths, his experience, and um, 
you know, packed with him before last year at tight end, and he was spot on there. So fully expecting him to do, do the job well. And can you talk a little about James's longevity? Like he's only he's going to become the third Wallabies player to play in four tournaments. His career sort of looked he looked a bit down and out, I suppose, sort of five years ago, and yeah, the way that he's managed to, you know, stay at the forefront of the game. Yeah, look, it's a remarkable achievement to play in four World Cups, particularly as a, you know, he started off as a tight head, um, then volunteered to go to loose head, and uh, he's volunteering to go back to tight head. Um, and it's a, it's a real um, testament to his, to his courage, to his resilience, to how much he loves the game, and he loves playing for the Wallabies. And we think on set on Sunday he'll play a, a pretty big game for us. Hi, Andy. I wonder if I can ask a slightly broader question. As a as someone who's such a student of coaching, I wonder if you could say what you have been reading of late, or what your late, most recent influences are on the way you coach and. If possible, if it's not too broad, sort of where you feel rugby coaching is going. I didn't think you liked me, mate. Hey, why are you following me around? Well, got a great relationship. All you? right, all right. Well, uh, I might beg to differ on that. Uh, well, I just think the game's evolving. You, you can see in this World Cup, the game's evolving into this. 30 second bouts of absolute power, you know, big people playing the game. Then you've, so you've got these 30 second bouts of power, then interspersed with a two minute burst of like soccer, football, where there's a lot of transition and you've got to be able to play really quickly. Um, and I think it's really fascinating at the moment where the game will go next. You know, the, the World Rugby have tried to make the game safer, but they've made it made it more powerful, made it more powerful by having more stoppages in the game. Um, and there's risks to that. There's risks when the game becomes more powerful. Um, but I think this World Cup's going to be decided by who can win those power contests. But then it might be in, in one game, and particularly a game like Fiji, where there is a lot of counter-attacking, that it might be one of those those football, soccer type episodes where there's a lot of transitional play. So I think the game's in a really fascinating spot and coaching wise, like I think how you prepare S and C wise for for almost two different games is is quite intriguing. And then how you get the players to have the skill set to be able to play this power game and at the same time be able to play an open transitional game. Look. Um, Eddie, you said there that um, World Rugby have made it, you know, effectively more dangerous with these these gaps. What would you do if you were in charge and had a, a blank slate? Well, I didn't say that. You said that. Okay, well, you said about the pauses in the game. Yeah. Well, there's what, what would you do if you had a... Uh, well, I've always said you need the game to be more continuous. I think... Uh, you know, the average average ball in play is 30 seconds, the average break in play is 70 seconds. So you encourage a power contest. Um, I think we need more continuous play. I think our use of the TMO in rugby is, is fraught with danger. Uh, they were asking a referee in the grandstand to make decisions on a different angle on the game through video. And I think it's... It's not making the game a better spectacle. I don't think it's making it a better game for the players. And I think just we're lucky because international rugby is so popular. Like you look at it, you know, Lille last night, 50,000 there to watch France play Uruguay. You know, we play a practice game against France, there's 80,000 people there. International rugby is so popular, we could almost put anything on the field and people are still going to come because of the nationalism and the patriotism of, of the teams but I think we need to improve the game I think we really need to improve the game I think at the end of this World Cup there'll be an opportunity to do that 
Um, maybe just to clarify, will, will you make a call on his availability today or will you give him sort of right until kickoff to make a call on that? Right up until kickoff, mate. Uh, and just on the uh, Fiji Wales result, I haven't got your take on that. Was there anything you particularly noticed from that given their two key opponents for Australia at the World Cup? Well, the only one we're worried about is, what, is Fiji. And if there were one or two things you wanted to see from this Wallaby side this weekend, you spoke about building throughout the tournament, what would they be? Oh, well, when you play against Fiji, you know, you'd always like to have a set-piece advantage, and, and we started the tournament off well in that area, so that's an a area we'd like to keep growing in. And then, you know, as I just spoke about, then our ability to win those power contests, and then if the game goes transitional, yeah, to be to be two steps ahead of Fiji, who are a good side in that area. Eddie, what's the deciding factor between um, picking Jordan Ulessi over Matt Fessler, who's played the last few games off the bench? Uh, well, there's nothing really in it, mate. Uh, it's more of a gut feeling that I think Jordy would be suited for the Fiji game. Can he help um, continue if you've got it? Dominance at that set piece, particularly scrum, he's a bigger body, um, but I guess. Also, one of the um, knocks on him in the past has been inaccuracy with the line out. How have you worked on that? Yeah, no, he's really improved in that area. So, Eddie, um, Evolution's been talked about this press conference. How do you think the introduction of Fiji and Drew has sort of evolved how Fiji approached the game at a test level and maybe shoring up that set piece game? Yeah, no, really positive, mate. Um, that, that Wales Fiji game, uh, Wales were forced to make it back in 274 tackles and completed 248 or so. Is defence, is it does defence kind of win this game or is that placed more importance this week knowing how much they like to use the ball? Well, again, you know, there's, there's two sorts of games. One will be the power contest and one will be the transitional contest. Uh, yeah, the power contest will be interesting. They've got a big pack, very big pack. Um, but we want to take them on in that area. Uh, and then the transitional, we've got, to, we've got to be one step ahead of them. One step ahead of them. Is, is this the game that you kind of thrive as a coach when there's guys, a couple of injuries, and it's such a high-stakes match? Is this the sort of thing that puts off hairs in the back of your back? Uh, well, we say a few more on my head, mate. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, we're well, we're well prepped for this game. We're looking forward to it. Uh, Eddie, um, going back to talking about changes to the game, I remember you talking on very similar vein uh, at the Coogee Bay Hotel when you brought England over a couple of years ago and said you were going to meet with lots of other international coaches and discuss the way forward for that. Has anything come out of that and should there be another avenue for them? Well, they don't want to know, mate. Oh. Is that the coaches? Or World Rugby? Maybe? World Rugby. They're not interested. Anything further, Freddie or Dave in the room? No, thanks guys. Thanks guys, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.